Hi, this is Matt Tebow from the University of Illinois with Stepping Away from Scores Toward the Varieties of Visualization, Representation for Learning. I became very interested in visualization uh, through my own students. These are some drawings from second grade students which were made when they were listening to music. Here's what the student was listening to. Here's something completely different visually, very fitting for the song that they were listening to, Shostakovich's Cello Concerto. and an extremely sensitive drawing to Samuel Barber's Adagio for Strings. In all of these instances, these poetic drawings uh, create an opportunity to circumvent one of the challenges of sound, which is that you hear it, and then it's gone. And its very ephemerality is a central challenge for music educators. I've got two slogans I want to explore in today's talk. One is this notion that I uh, learned from Elliot Eisner, which every way of seeing is a way of not seeing. We're going to represent Mozart uh, in a variety of ways, four ways very quickly, and talk about how these ways are slightly different. In order to be quick, we're going to work with just a short fragment of a sonata that you very likely know. Now, if we just look at the standard score, there are some things that a very small number of people can read. Almost no one can actually read Western music or sight read it, but for musicians who can read it, they'll often pay attention to and remark upon uh, the accidentals, which uh, indicate a change of tonal center or tonicization. They'll talk about the voice switching from left hand to right hand, and they'll probably talk about individual pitches or certain chords. It's very different if you give them an, an amplitude display. When people look at this, and just about anyone can, they often notice that there's a gradual increase of volume as the excerpt plays and, and the amplitude display reads from left to right, resulting in those final two cadences, bum bum, at the far right of the screen. This is a different way of seeing, one that tends to privilege phrasing, form, and dynamics, and to give someone a visual of the big picture. Another way of viewing, one that's similar to a score but readable by almost anyone, is a MIDI display. This captures the same fragment, and it colors, in this particular display, the left hand and the right hand differently. MIDI displays are a very intuitive way, especially when listened to while watching. Students who uh, look at this will often notice that the as the parts change hands, the chords that are accompanying them change. The blue chords at the beginning kind of expand outward. Blum, 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 blum. And then when it goes to the right hand playing the up and down pattern, the, the, uh, the left hand playing the up and down pattern, the red chords in the center of the diagram are 
collapsing inward. So there's an interesting detail that can be listened for that people almost always catch with their eyes, which they almost never notice when they look at a score. They can also talk about the ending in some way. But an even more profound way to get at the actual sound is to look at a spectrograph, which can also be hard to learn to read, uh, although there's an easy way to learn to read, which is just to turn on a spectrographic view of a piece of music and watch it. And typically, by the end of the piece, you've figured out how it works. Most interesting to me are the display of overtones, the harmonics that are always audible, but which aren't captured by any of the other views that we've looked at. In particular, in the center of this, you can notice that when the parts change hand and the lower octave is played, the upper overtone, which is the octave, continues. So if you follow with your eye, starting at the left, this up and down pattern of this sequence, when you get to the middle, it continues. This is one of the fascinating things about this view, namely that the jump of the octave, which our ears feel quite comfortable with, in some ways isn't even a jump at all. It's simply the addition of a new lower level. It's probably overly technical for your average lay viewer, but musicians are probably excited by seeing this sequence continued. It's also clear, looking at the very end, that this cadential pattern on the far right, maybe just a little bit before the ending, there's a lot of sound there, and that's because the bass notes are playing. Contrast that with the MIDI display, those little uh, uh, short blue notes at the very end, which don't look like they're very loud or very uh, agitated, become this incredible creation of tension that's then released by that blum, blum. Of course, we could align all these views and try to contemplate how each provides a way of seeing something. It makes some understandings more probable than others and that in combining these, we may find a deeper understanding. Let's enjoy listening now to the Mozart, and you can look at whichever of the visualizations you'd like. a lot of information there, and Gregory Bateson famously said that information is a difference that makes a difference, by which he means that in order for us to understand um, and to really have some information, the difference has to make a difference. Um, I think that the spectrogram view, which I just presented um, with the overtones, is a little bit challenging, so I'd like to explore that briefly with you. Here's a spectrographic view of a piece of music that you may well recognize. that is Cashmere by Led Zeppelin. Here's a few things that I've noticed in my own experience of watching this movie play. Looking and then listening and then looking and then listening. Using my eyes to help guide my ears and letting my ears notice things that I then tried to find visually. One of the things that stuck out was this change in the vocal overtone. It starts out stronger in the upper partial, and then it weakens out that top band. But the lower uh, overtone is softer, and then it gets more loud. And I thought, well, what's the difference here? How did he pull that off? How did he change the timbre of his voice? And in listening, it's by uh, the change of his vowel. At first, he's singing an E sound, and then an ah. And if I sing that a couple times, you may notice that even though I'm singing the same pitch, one is a little bit fuller, a little bit darker. 
イヤーイヤーイヤーイー Pretty interesting. Something that you can look for while you listen. And you can also notice that he's not singing a straight pitch, but that there's these microtonal shifts that your eye、uh, can follow while he's singing. And if you listen closely, you may be able to hear those、uh, slight shifts in pitch as well. There's also effects produced、um, in, and there are production effects in any recording. In this one, one of the interesting things in this moment is that the reverb gets added and a sense of echo,、uh, a creation of a sense that he's singing in a cathedral,、uh, is uh, very prominent at the end of this, but it's not at the beginning. It's as if he's teleported into a cathedral, but it actually works.、Uh, From a musical standpoint, it's interesting to listen to and interesting to listen for, and you can see that smeared quality in this. There's a couple of other things that you could also track.、Uh, any visualization, if you spend enough time, you can find lots of interesting complexities. On the lower left, I've、uh, highlighted、uh, some blobs there that are the bass drums and the snare drum.、Um, Along the bottom, there's three highlighted areas. The second one is an area where there's a snare roll, and that third one is this uh, syncopated uh, snare drum where the bass drum drops out to create this tension, just as Mozart did.、Uh, John Bonham, drumming for Led Zeppelin, creates a sense of tension, which is then released、um, with the voice and everything else coming together. It's this great moment of tension that you can listen for and enjoy. Also, on the、uh, far right hand side, I've put up Um, a metric diagram. The yellow depicts the string pattern, which is a three beat pattern. Da da da, da da da, la da da, da da da, la da da, two, ten, three. And the, below that is the drumming pattern, which is a two beat pattern. Boom, ka, boom, ka. And so there's a six beat pattern interlocking that is、uh, one of the beauties of this piece of music. I've highlighted some other things, and of course, there's things that you may notice. Uh, as I play you this same movie one more time. Pretty cool stuff. All right, so to wrap up in conclusion, I'd like to、uh, state four things. That first, as I'm writing here, learners benefit from multiple views of a musical work. This has、uh, been part of my own experience as I've used more visualizations. I'm finding that different、uh, visualizations are better for different pieces of music, or sometimes for certain students. A certain visualization will be especially meaningful. Um, I do believe that every recording can be visualized meaningfully, often easily, via a computer.、Uh, I used Audacity to create those spectrographic views as well as the amplitude displays. MIDI files exist and can be dropped into programs like GarageBand. For the dedicated teacher, it's easy to figure out ways to visualize things. My third point here learning can help hearing and vice versa. There is a wonderful synthesis of our senses and an interaction of our senses where our attention can be focused by things that we see and by things that we hear. And I think we don't、uh, yet do enough to take advantage of、uh, what computers often make very, very、uh, easy to do and very viable.、Uh, and then lastly, of course, music educators can enhance their teaching through the use of visualizations. Whether it's a spectrographic view of a rehearsal in a class, or whether it is、uh, the analysis of a piece of music, or the creation of a score、uh, using a spectrograph from a pop、uh, recording where there isn't a score otherwise available, there's lots of ways that we can enhance how we go about teaching students. Thanks for tuning in, and、uh, I'm, I hope to get some feedback from some folks on whether this presentation format is valuable. Take care.